Hello, Keller Williams, Market Pro Realty. How are you? It's Mike Begno, Director of Growth, coming to you from the Bentonville office. And I want to talk to you today about profit share. I really, uh, I really want to break it down for you and uh, really bring some understanding and some clarity around this, uh, this, this topic of profit share. So let me ask you a question. Has every, anyone ever seen our checks hanging up the wall or these, or these uh, billboards that say to our agents, in big numbers, tens of thousands of dollars up here in the check. Have you ever seen that and wondered who gets that and how is that paid out? And I want a piece of that, but I don't even know what that is. Well, during the next 22 minutes, I am going to break down very specifically and accurately for you how that gets figured and who gets paid. Does that sound good? Something we should know, right? Well, let's do it. Uh, I want to uh, want to come over here to my dry erase board, and I, I want to give a quick shout out to a gentleman with our company by the name of Bruce Hardy. Bruce is a most excellent former team leader. He's a regional director uh, in the Pacific Northwest, and I've had the privilege to actually see him do this on on several occasions. And uh, I just know that as a video, as a training video out there, um, I, I just want to, in full disclosure. I'm not smart enough to figure this out on my own. Success leaves clues. We learn from others. So I just uh, I want to give credit where credit is due. So you know we're an open book company. So everything I want to talk about when it comes to our financials each and every month, this is all reportable information that all of our agents have access to. Um, all these numbers are going to be found in our multi-year trend reports. So what I want to do is ask you a question. Is it possible to earn $10,000 in gross commission income? In GCI? Of course it is. Say yes. I, okay, I'm hearing it. All the yeses back there. Yeah. Our average co gross commission income per transaction is a little over $6,000. So in one month, 10,000 is possible. That may not be one home, that might be two homes, or that might be a, a, a 330,000 price, sales price home at 3% would, would earn someone $10,000 in gross commission income. So let's, uh, let's use that as an example and let's take a hypothetical month. Let's take the month we're in now. So an agent earns $10,000 in gross commission income in the month of, this happens to be March of 2020. So let's, let's examine how we're going to figure what gets paid into profit share from that. Let's do it. So our office, the total gross commission income for the month of March, I'm gonna take an average for our market center, actually a little bit below average, Quite frankly, we, we do more, average more about a million and a half per month in gross commission income, both office. Did you know that? Should know that. We should know our numbers, right? So with a, with a million point two in gross commission income, does the market center get to operate on that much, on that amount? And the answer is no. And the biggest reason why the market center doesn't get to get to uh, operate on that is the majority of that money is going to go to who? Capped agents. Agents who have already capped. In fact, that's over 60% uh, on average is paid out to fully capped agents. So the money that comes in the front door, uh, I would say the majority of that, and I'm going to use these numbers here kind of a typical, I'm using some typical average numbers, 700,000. That's gonna go directly to capped agents. Justin, thank you for filming this today. Are you catching, are we able to catch the whole, the yes. whole thing here? So seven. So what, what does that leave? If we, if we take 700,000 that just goes directly straight through to agents, that's going to leave a dollar amount that we have a name for. Who could guess the name for what, what the other revenue is. That's called paid on volume, P-O-V. This is the amount of dollar volume that comes into the market center monthly in which the market center is paid on a percentage of that, correct? Paid on volume. So where does most of that go? Well, specifically, 70% 70, 70 of that goes to agents again. So in this case, in this hypothetical situation, $350,000 goes out, that, 
that represents the 70% of the agent's net portion, and that leaves an amount that we call company dollar. Company dollar is very important to the, to the running of the market center, to the paying of rents, to the paying of utilities. That's actually, now we're getting into the gross income that Keller Williams Market Pro Realty makes in a month. So now what happens, does, does uh, we use that money, and this is very important to understand that this is not yet profit. Why is it not profit? Because we have expenses. You bet, we've got expenses. So I'm going to write expenses down here, and I'm going to say that 90000 which is right around our budget. How do I know that? How do I know 90000 is around our budget? You know, we have a finance committee that meets once a month, and they tell me. We have agents who keep an eye. That's why it's important to watch our expenses. So on an average month, we might be looking at 90000 in expenses, and what is that? bring 60,000 left over. What do we call this? Now we're starting to have fun. This is our profit. This is, we've finally gotten down to our office of profit. Now, in any other company you've ever worked with, in any other real estate company in Northwest Arkansas, who gets that money? The owners. That's owners. But at Keller Williams Realty, Gary has required a system for his franchises that go back, it goes back to 1986 when he developed profit share. And what is happening in Northwest Arkansas and around the world with Keller Williams is that approximately 50% of that is being paid back in, in the form of profit share. Now, <coughs> excuse me, when that is figured, that is always uh, figured at approximately 48%. For, for illustration purposes, I've got this today at 50%, and I can get with anybody later and explain the formula that goes into that, but really it's roughly 50%. What happens is, the first thing that happens when the financials come in at the end of the month, by the way, this is why we transmit every month. Does everybody wonder why we talk about transmittal? We zero the books out. We actually account and zero out our balances every month that will so that will allow a payment of profit share so when we arrive at this number we come up with a profit share pool of money as we go down we identify um, as you can see in february one of our lowest months it was just under thirty thousand dollars it was near twenty five thousand dollars our biggest months have been up to seventy-five and eighty thousand in profit share pool. So, what happens here? Let's talk about it. In this given month of March, this example, remember an agent over here that earned ten thousand dollars in gross commission income. So, this agent is not capped. I want you to I want you to know this: a payout in profit share from this agent would require that they not be capped. So this 10,000 in GCI, since they're not capped, where would it show up over here? Yes, it would be part of the gross commission income, that big number of a million two. Um, it, it would not be part of this capped money since that flowed straight through. It would be part of the paid on volume. This half a million here, this 500,000, this 10,000 would be included in here. So let me ask you all a question. What percentage, here's a math, the only math question I'm going to ask you, what percentage of 500,000 is 10,000? I'm going to help you with it. It's 2%. 10,000 is 2% of a half a million, okay? So what would happen once the agents get paid, if, it, if it's 2% of 500,000, doesn't it also stand a reason that this agent has contributed 2% of the company dollar when they figure that? Yes. And if this agent has contributed 2% of the company dollar after expenses, doesn't it stand a reason that they're responsible for 2% of the profit? And if they have contributed 2% of the profit, shouldn't it also stand a reason 
that they're responsible for 2% of the profit share pool? The answer is yes, through all, all this. You see, their contribution, they're responsible for paid on volume, they're responsible for company dollar, they, they are right in the profit pool, therefore, they're in the profit share pool. So they are responsible for 2% of this $30,000. And what amount is that? What dollar amount is that? $600. Are you with me? So we identify, first of all, what we have to do is, is take this agent, identify how much they've contributed to the profit share pool, and we come up with a dollar number. In this case, it's $600. So this agent, Agent X, is responsible for that profit share pool. But who's really responsible? See, at Keller Williams, when you come into the company, you've named a sponsor. That sponsor is the person, individual, most influential in you joining the company. So really, Agent X, thank you. You're responsible for $600 in profit share. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, who's really responsible is Agent X their sponsor. Their sponsor, we are going to give their sponsor 50% of what the agent contributed to the profit share pool. In this example, that's $300. Okay? But now who's really responsible because, because their sponsor also has a sponsor. And we're going to give that person 10% of the dollar amount that that agent brought in, which is $60. But you know what? They had a sponsor. And we're going to give them 5%, which is $30. They had a sponsor. We're going to give them 5%. You know what? That agent had a sponsor, and they're going to get 7.5%. And they had a sponsor. They're going to get 10%. And they also had a sponsor who's going to earn 12.5%, which is going to be $72.50. Okay? So if you add up all these percentage points, what do you come up with? It's 100%. All the amount that this agent during the month of March contributed to the profit share pool is going to get paid out to other agents going up. 100% of it is going to be used. Now, the biggest response that we get over time is, why so complicated? Well, let me, let me address that just a little bit. Because Gary was asked that over the years. And one thing you have to know is that he looked at, at doing an employee, an employee share program. Thing is, we're not employees. We're 1099. Uh, he also looked at at using stocks and going public. Well, then you, you don't have control over the company and then you, you, you become susceptible to the influence of outside forces. So this is simply a compensation disbursement program, a way to d a disperse money. Remember, where did this money come from? All of this money came from the owner's profit. And, and what I want you to know is what makes this an awesome system is that there is no capital outlay. What, what that means is nobody can buy into this program. You, know, you cannot write a check and be part of profit share. There's, there's no such way to do that. Um, there's also, hear me on this, there's no financial risk. The only way profit share gets paid out is if an agent who is not capped contributes to the market center and the market share uh, the market center itself is profitable. Say if the market center isn't profitable one month, do we go to the agents and ask the agents to write a check? The answer is no. There's no risk here. The owners take the risk, but there's no risk to, per to participate in profit share. Finally, I want to make this point. We've talked about sponsorship and your sponsors. There's no management oversight. You're not going to be required. We have training and we have productivity coaches. We have agent service coordinators. We have a lot of people here to help agents. It's not going to be anybody's management oversight to, to, uh, to oversee any of this. So, 
We're making good progress. What's the opportunity? What is the opportunity here for agents? Here's what it is. Anybody who comes in to Keller Williams, if this is you, anyone who comes into Keller Williams and names you a sponsor, when they contribute any company dollar, the percentage of company dollar that they contribute, 50% of that is going to go to you as their sponsor. Okay? Here's the thing. Anybody that ever comes into the business and names them a sponsor, anyone that they sponsor into the business, whenever they're productive and they contribute to the company dollar and therefore to profit share, you're going to get 10%. And anybody they sponsor, 5%. And anybody they sponsor, 5%. Anybody they sponsor, 7.5%. Anybody they sponsor, 10%. Anybody they sponsor, 12.5%. So if you look at these percentages, by the way, by the way, they seem to get smaller and then they get larger at the bottom because what, what we know as time goes by and it grows out, your largest sections will be, will be on the bottom. So it is designed that way for a reason. So... Um, there's the opportunity. You know, um, I'll tell you that less than half of our agents um, participate in profit share. And when I say that, less than half of our agents has sponsored somebody else to the company. And you think, what, what is happening here? Gary always believes that he wants to reward the activities that lead to growth in our company. This is very growth-minded. It's an encouragement. It's a free offer. Um, been, been called many things a gift that the owners of a company give back to agents to help grow the company. I think that what you find in profit share is you find it really reveals the heart of this company. See, it was profit share that led to us having to be an open book company. You know, you can't share the profits of your business with, with your agents unless you open up the books. And that, that was understood very early on. Gary realized he couldn't say, come to his agents and say, sorry, we weren't profitable last month. There's no profit share paid out. And then he pulls up in the office in a new Lamborghini. That, would, uh, that wouldn't be good for culture. Uh, so we realized sharing profits led to transparency. It leads to accountability. And uh, so, many, so many things that... Um, that really are part of our DNA at, uh, at Keller Williams. Lastly, I want you to know that once you've been with the company for seven years and one day, you vest, you are fully vested. That means if you leave the company, if you retire, if you uh, leave the country, you're still going to receive your profit share every month. It's also willable to your family. And uh, we feel it's one of the best 401 KWs out there. That's what, uh, that's what we call it. So as I hope that brings some understanding around this, uh, maybe even starts a discussion within the office. You know that if you see me around and uh, want to dig deeper, there's always a, uh, some, some deeper questions around it, but that is really what's happening here. And uh, oh, by the way, we're, we're approaching a billion and a half as a company in our history having paid out. It's real, it's real money. Uh, our top profit share earner is from North Texas, Linda McKissick, you've probably heard the name. Uh, but she and her husband earn uh, about a million and a half dollars a year and it's just in purely in profit share. And uh, that number is growing. I appreciate you all. Thank you for listening. I hope this brings some clarity to this topic. And I look forward to seeing you around the Market Center and uh, look forward to more of these discussions. Appreciate you. Thanks.